Hey, my friends, what's going on? It's Ultimus, and I have more 3v3 arenas for you. Still playing as Turbo Cleave, this time up against what I believe is an alteration of a Shadow Cleave. Uh, normally, a Shadow Cleave is with an Affliction Warlock and an Unholy Death Knight with a healer. Uh, in this particular case, they've got an Affliction Warlock and a Frost Death Knight simply because Frost is just pulling ahead in means of damage and burst, and since Unholy doesn't have the CC control that it once had before, it's just not as good, let alone not having the Necrotic Strike. But I digress. Um, our kill target is definitely going to be the Affliction Warlock. Uh, I'll be swapping back and forth between the Druid a little bit, pumping damage into the Warlock right off the bat here, uh, trying to nail that spell reflection up as best I can and keep an eye on CC. Um, switching over to kill the pet now, I'm noticing that the druid is not paying attention to the warlock pet health, which is going to A, put the warlock in a rough position where he has to waste a global to summon another pet, and I got the victory rush. So, uh, that takes a little pressure off my healer, which again, I really like to do. Anything I can do to help my healer out is a big deal. Uh, Enhancement Shaman has taken a ton of damage. As you can see, he's down to just about 50% health going back up now. Uh, but things got a little bit scary there, which I think is the biggest reason I like to sit on the Warlock. I don't like them free casting. Managed to get that Haunt Reflect. I don't know how he missed me having Spell Reflect up, but there it is. Uh, trying to take advantage of the fact that I'm still on the lock with the lock pet there. So I'm going to try to land the kill on that again as well. I figure if the healer is not healing it, might as well. Um, so a little bit scary for me just to kind of walk away from the Warlock. It's a strange like train of thought for me to try to do. It just seems so counterintuitive, but it's actually very smart to kill the Warlock pet when you can. Because again, the same reason as stated before. So now the Warlock has no pet, nothing to really work with there. Um, Shaman is dipping very, very low again, so a little bit scary. Uh, I have no rallying cry for him, unfortunately. Going to run over here and we're going to Pop the fear once I can figure out my uh, targeting all over again, my goodness. Um, and then I'm going to slip back over on the lock. I don't really want to waste my charge because I know that lock is going to have his portal up. And I want to be able to use charge to get back on that. Spending some time to apply a little bit of appeals and switching back to the Warlock as well. Uh, taking advantage of this three stack there for the Blade Storm as I can. Keeps me out of CC. And then we're just going to keep sticking to the Warlock. Sticking to the Warlock. I get 10 seconds left on Stormbolt, which I'm looking forward to throwing on that Shaman. But that Warlock is taking so much damage and he ends up taking that 100,000 uh, Execute non-crit to the face. Very well played. On top of this, I feel like if there's one thing I could learn from this match that I could have done a little bit better um, is obviously making sure I've got my focus stuff set up properly and not waiting till the middle of the match to set it up. And as well as just uh, also applying peels. Uh, the nice thing about playing on the Ruins of Lorder on though is you really have to try hard to line of sight your healer. So uh, except for the you know the big you know sepulcher there in the center there, for the most part it's pretty hard to line of sight your healer. So that, that alone helps keep me going, I think. Uh, but in this particular match, we're up against a Shadow Priest Assassination Rogue Restoration Druid. Uh, really not sure what to call this cleave or comp, other than the fact that I know rogues and Shadow Priest work together fairly well, typically when the rogue is playing subtlety, though. Uh, not necessarily when Assassination is being placed. Assassination is a decent spec, but I don't think it v goes very well with a Shadow Priest. Because it doesn't necessarily have all the CC that subtlety in combat does to apply proper peels for the Shadow Priest. At least in my opinion. Uh, so, as always, uh, Shadow Priest is going to be the kill target. It is the easiest kill. Uh, as you can see, the Priest is pretty much out of defense. It's here for the Psychic Scream here, which I'm going to trinket out of. Just to be laying down damage on. I uh, want to keep the pressure rolling, keep the pressure rolling. Make that Druid have to work really hard to keep him alive. And unfortunately, no matter how hard he worked, it wasn't going to be enough. And they ended up leaving. Which, I guess, is, makes sense for everybody's time. No sense in wasting our time and your time if the match is already over. Up against a WLS, except no Shaman. It's with a Mistweaver Monk. Now, Mistweaver Monks have... A really decent synergy with Arms Warriors. Uh, probably one of my favorite healers to play with in arenas, even 3v3s, is a Mistweaver Monk. A good Mistweaver Monk will keep itself and everybody alive for days. Now, this warrior is just laying damage into me, though, so that was a little bit scary. Pulling out there to go sit back on the warrior as he's over here. Um, the Warlock is going to be our kill target, though, for the most part. I'm uh, going to be sitting on the warrior a lot though because he is fairly low and seeing if we could force some defensives out of him. 
so that if we ever get a good go on him, we're able to set it up and not have too many defensives to wade through. Uh, ended up getting some gnarly uh, cooldowns popped on myself here. Saved by the light proc on me, which puts me in a very vulnerable position. Uh, luckily, we got Execute Incense on me, and we've got uh, lots of buffs rolling over here. Unfortunately, the Warrior is still pumping damage into me. Looking back on this match, I probably should have spent more time in defensive stance. Um, but for I just... Sometimes I just want to do damage. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if we were higher rated, I probably would be playing a little bit smarter or more intuitively. Hey, let's sit defensive stance more. But sometimes it's fun just to go in and go ham. And as you can see, we're popping tons of cooldowns out of all these guys. Switching over to the Monk while the Borlock is bubbled there in the Cocoon. I'm going to swap back over here, though. And I'm dangerously low, so then I get the hint to switch back over to defensive stance. I'm going to drip so, so low. Scarily low. Landed the interrupt, though. We're going to keep the pressure going on the Monk here. Uh, I'm caught in that leg sweep, which doesn't really bode well for me, but we're going to jump right back on there. Uh, just keep the pressure rolling as best as we can. we got the Monk so low. doesn't really have a whole lot defensive-wise left. Uh, and I'm not going to get around there in time to get to the Monk. I could swap to the Warlock, but we're going to save our charge and our fear to rush in and land that kill. Love, love situations like that, especially with Warbringer. Sets up the stun so nicely, you can fear off that. And of course, having Berserker's Rage to bop out of that uh, fear helped be able to land the kill. And this puts us, of course, in a very, very decent spot to still win. Although the Shaman is taking a good amount of damage, so I'm not really ready to celebrate yet. But at this point, we know we got it, because the Warlock really doesn't have a prayer. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please do stick around for more. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. I have more Turbo Cleave coming for you guys very, very soon. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.